Okay, so um, this is the Kitchen Queen wood cook stove. And my wife and I bought this uh, a few years ago. And this is pretty much the heart of our home, but it needs to be maintained and has to be constantly cleaned out. So um, on a constant basis, I'd say during the winter season, you should probably do it about every, well, we push limits probably two months. Every two months we do a clean out. So we're at uh, March and I probably haven't cleaned it out since December. So we're looking at probably three months. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, um, this is creosote buildup and it just flakes off. As you can see, there's just these flakes everywhere inside um, and it goes all the way in. Okay. But the tools we need to do this is I need to have uh, one of these actually lift the uh, stove plates up. I have a gasket cleaner I use for auto mechanics. <laughs> I have to kind of get way back in there and scrub things, scrub that creosote off. I have a Cree flashlight and I have a spatula kind of thing. This is a spat. And then I also have the tool that actually came with the, uh, the wood cook stove. Mm. Uh, from the uh, manufacturer, and you just kind of reach way back in there. You can scrub certain places. I also try to use these to keep my hands from getting completely full of creosote and charcoal. And then the other thing that we use is our uh, wet dry vac. And um, the reason we use wet dry vac is to get some of that finer stuff to get some of the creosote that we break away to get it in instead of like hand picking each piece. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, the basics. Um, I have the main f firebox. Oh, my wife just reminded me. We also have safety glasses that I use because when you get that creosote, it gets all around your eyes and I've had it go in the eye and it's not a comfortable feeling for the rest of the day. So I have those as well. So what I'll start with is I'll start by removing the ash into the ashtray down below and the ashtray is here. Now when I do this, I'm gonna be really basic with you. When I actually remove the ash here, I push it down using the, the long tool that came with this. And so I'll do is I'll push it down like this. Okay, as you can see, there's still some red stuff in there, some hot coals. Not much because we let the fire go down. I don't know if you can see that way back there. But um, we have some, a, few tiny tiny red coals in there so you got to be aware that when you dump this you got to dump it into either an ash bucket like this um, but since we live on 10 acres and we have a safe spot that we've designated for ash dump I just take it straight out and dump it outside um, this is usually used for maintaining and if the ash gets too full in here, we just need to move it out quick. I do that with the door down here closed. When I'm done with that, I'll take this door, I'll put newspaper down here. Just to kind of prevent some of the mess. And then I pull, I pull this out and then I go dump it in a safe spot. Because remember, there might be hot coals in there. Okay. Now, then once this is all cleaned, all scrubbed out, all the creosote's off the door, everything's looking good, then what I do is I come back to this side, and you notice we have a very wide spot here uh, for actually uh, getting to the back of the stove. Now, I mean, this is, this is beyond code, I think I only need like 18 inches, but uh, as far as getting to the clean out spot here, I need to be able to get down mm -hmm. and I need to be able to get into this drawer here. And this is the last clean out drawer. Now this, this clean out drawer goes underneath your, your actual stove. So when the fire comes underneath the stove, it goes up the side, goes over the top, and then goes out here. So what I need to do is I need to pull this off as you can see, all the creosote mm. build up in this, and there's tons of ash mm -hmm. from you know the, just having it pulverize the uh, the wood in there as mm -hmm. it burns it. And so I have to clean this out, and I also have to clean out the side, 
that's up here because it's full of creosote weld. That's where that, once again, that's where that tool comes in very handy of going in there and then really kind of scraping down uh, that area. So that's how you kind of clean out a um, kitchen queen. At least that's how we clean out our kitchen queen. Um, and yes, we probably pull out more tools than most people, but we really want to make sure that uh, it gets cleaned out each time. Because if you don't clean it out, it can get more creosote and then more creosote and yeah. So um, I'll have my wife maybe take mm -hmm. some stills and uh, just show you maybe a few seconds uh, between each clean out uh, in each little, like maybe smaller video clips of the clean out. Since We've had nobody show us how to do it. We've kind of had to figure this out by trial and error. Thank you.